Rick, it's a rainy Tuesday and we are here to enlighten people as much as we can. And yes, and it's cloudy out and we'll still do the enlightening. I know. <laughs> Something like I know. that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, we'll get right to the chase so that we don't have mm -hmm. too much chit chat, which is, uh, Brianna told me we do a lot of chit chatting. I think we're fun and interesting, but we'll get right to the main <laughs> course here. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, um, my news feed was just like blowing up over the weekend with mm -hmm. all the news of bank bailouts. And, you know, that, that left a bad taste in our mouth from uh, uh, 2000 and, and 11, 12, that sort of thing. But yeah. I wanted to kind of read some of the headlines mm -hmm. and then you can help us make sense of what in the hell has gone on in the last four days. Okay, so cool. um, I'm going to just read you a few headlines. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Yahoo Finance says, Housing market could see relief from shock move in treasury market after SBB collapse. The next one says CNBC, mortgage mm -hmm. rates tumble in the wake of bank failure. I mean, tumble, okay? <laughs> so dramatic. Okay, the next one is from Biz Now. Mark, mortgage rates dropped after bank failures in moment of a moment of opportunity for buyers. Just a moment. Uh, here's from Fox Business. Mortgage rates post big decline among Silicon Valley bank fallout. And I'll read you one more from um, uh, to do. It's uh, San Francisco Chronicle. Mortgage rates are dropping after Silicon Bank collapse. How low will they go? So, Rick, please tell us what in the hell is going on out there. Um. I say I just love that entertainment because it's pure entertainment. <laughs> Tumble, <laughs> you know, they're tumbling. At, uh, yeah, so we've talked about this so much over the last seems like three years now. We've talked about these topics. Look, here's the deal. Let's break this down because I want to get into the, all the reasons why. Right? Yeah. Um, look, let's face the facts. The media headlines are designed to entertain to get you to open the articles and read them and get entertained by it. And then here's the doom and gloom, whatever they want to talk about. Look, here's the deal. Mortgage rates, I don't care what happens on any given day, they never quote unquote tumble. They ah, just don't do that. So disappointing, but I've never heard uh, of I know. Number. And I, I wish they did. I would love to wake know. up one day and go, hey, rates just dropped a full 1%. My day would be just made. That would Doesn't be so much more way. fun if, it, if yeah. it, that happened that way. <laughs> but but let's look at that though. I mean, there's some truth in some of that, but it's not entirely true. Let's so let's see what that let's break that down a little bit. Got it. Let's talk about why. The, let's talk about um, Silicon Valley Bank. That was the biggest failure over the weekend. So let's let's talk about that for a minute. Um, Silicon Valley Bank. Well, what all banks do is they invest their money, the depositors' money into assets. Okay, mm -hmm. that particular bank invested a lot of money into bonds. Mm -hmm. Well, they had a ton of money into bonds, and so, but what they were not anticipating is we never anticipated any of us, that last year the rates spiked. We know the rates spiked last year. So you take a bank like that, they have billions of dollars literally in, in bonds, sitting in bonds. And so when those rates went up so quick last year, those bonds became de devalued. I mean, literally overnight, they lost like 30%. So you can imagine you're a bank with billions of dollars in assets and you lose something like 30% of that value, what that does to the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And so what triggered that situation with, honestly, with, uh, Silicon Valley Bank or SBB was their stock. Their stock last week crashed, sixty percent drop in stock because because their assets are dropping. Their balance sheet's in trouble because of the value of their investments. That's Sounds really what like happened. A good time to buy Silicon Valley Bank stock. I mean, you know. Yeah, right. But discount. see that that but that bank is also unique because most of their depositors are are tech startups, big money people like that. They're, that's not the kind of bank where you and I would go to bank. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're gonna open up the next Tesla, then go to SVB and get a big loan because they'll loan that loan for you. Right. Right. And that's kind of the kind of bank they were. So part of it has to do with SVB has to do with, with the way the bank was managed, and unfortunately they got caught in that trap of buying a bunch of bonds that are now really devalued. Right. Um, so let's but let's talk about what happened yesterday in the mortgage market. Well, yeah, the good news is because of that collapse. The thinking is now the feds have got to really pay attention to the interest rates mm -hmm. because those increasing interest rates is what caused that bank essentially to collapse because of their right. investments. 
so the so the big investment thinking is well heck if that's happening at SVB, it's probably happening elsewhere the feds have got to react to that and lower the rates it's like an unintended consequence but the feds right. are not the feds aren't lowering our mortgage rates. What are they lowering? Oh, no, the feds don't lower our rates at all, but <laughs> I wish they did sometimes. I know, but people um, get so but confused, yeah. They get confused about that. But look, yesterday, the market did improve a little bit on mortgage rates. Now, look, we probably saw an eighth of 1% drop in rates yesterday. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not that's not really tumbling. I know, that's is that just... going to make, like how much on it? I mean... Just ballpark it here on a million dollar purchase with 20% down an $800,000 mm-hmm. loan an mm-hmm. eighth of a percentage in their interest rate is going to change your payment by about how much? About $70 a month. 70. Okay. So tumbling is $70 a month. Okay. I just have to figure yeah. out where we were at with the what does that mean, right? Okay. Go ahead. So, so you look at what happened today. Well, after the market digests all this data from yesterday, guess what happened today? Don't tell me the they market, went up. Well, the market took back more than half of what it made yesterday. So, well, so tell me how the rates tumbled. I it's know. Just, but, but to your point, that one article said just this moment in time, it was like that quick moment in time. Right. Just for a very brief moment, the market rallied a little bit, but then took it back the next day. Yeah. Okay. So look, you got to put that in perspective. I do think, however, that through the course of this year, we're going to see, generally speaking, rates declining. Now, they don't tumble. They don't just drop overnight. It's a long process. Mm-hmm. And what I always say about the rates, here's my analogy. I know it seems kind of weird, but here's my analogy. And, if, and they, I think we can relate to this from last year. When rates are going up, it's like watching a raging forest fire. Right. When rates are going down, it's like watching grass grow. It is painful right. to watch. Right. Okay. So, so look, I think we're going to see rates coming down all of this year. They won't tumble, they won't drop overnight, but over time, they will come down as the Fed begins to see that the effect of the raising the rates this past 15 months, that the market now is starting to settle down. We're seeing less inflation and we may have to lower the rates a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, so this morning, CPI came out, consumer price index numbers came out and still shows inflation is not going down. Inflation is still at around 6%. Mm-hmm. To get the Feds where we wanna be in terms of rates, long-term rates, We've got to see that inflation number drop to about two and a half percent. So we got to really get from six percent to two and a half percent on those inflation numbers. Mm-hmm. So when you start to see those inflation numbers coming down, that's when you see rates coming down with it. Mm-hmm. That will take take some take some period of time. Right, right. Very good. I think that's a great analogy, and we still have, you know, um, the lack of inventory. There's still no houses on yeah. the, the market. There was no. Yeah. No big increase, but you know, April is coming. And typically, mm-hmm. in my experience, after between April 15th and April 30th is when the spring housing market really kicks off. So I mm-hmm. hope that whatever it is we're going through right now gets sort of sort- sorted out by April 15th so that people can yeah. be free to mm-hmm. move around and, you know, buy without yeah. panic, you know. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay with that too. I think um, as the rates come down a little bit this next few months and we start to see more inventory, I think we'll start to see more of a balanced market. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? More of a more of a normal market, whatever normal looks like anymore. But um, we're not going to see the frenzy we saw, you know, a couple of years ago. Right. And that's okay too. That's fine. That's fine. We don't I'm need okay. all that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't need 25 offers in every house. We just need two yeah. or three good ones. Right. Yeah, believe it or not, it's not uh, easy to manage all of those offers on one house. We we do our best. We've got uh, Google spreadsheets. We've got a system. We know what we do, but you know, it's just a lot. So a having lot. a nice balance market is good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I appreciate you. Thank you for debunking. Uh, tumbling down interest rates, and because now you know people see this and they're like, oh, maybe I should wait because things are going to improve it's like like we always say if you see an opportunity and it works for you just take it and go with it because it is hard Mm -hmm. to find opportunities that work for you you know i yeah i like you know i've got people that are looking at uh historic homes in downtown Mm -hmm. anaheim and all year there's been all year 
one bungalow that has come up for sale. One. Wow. It had no garage. It had no Mills Act. And it sold for, it still sold for about, I think it was about 80,000 over asking. Because wow. somebody wow. saw that opportunity and took it. They've probably been looking for a while. Mm. So, you know, mm -hmm. go out there. Don't play this rate game. Get yourself approved. And if you see something yeah. you like, make a move and uh, move on with your life. Yeah, that's a very good point because people try to talk about timing the stock market, for example. That's never a winning proposition. And it's the exact same way in real estate and lending. People try to time the market. They try to time the interest rates. There's no possible way to do that, right? So to your point, when, you, when the opportunity arises, take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's a really good answer. Well, I appreciate your time today and we will be back Thank next you, Maggie. week. Thank you, Megan. And yeah. try to stay dry. That'll be fun. See ya. See ya.